Welcome, I'll be guiding you on playing PlayStation 2 games on your Windows PC using a recently updated emulator, PCSX2 1.6.0. You first need the game file you're wanting to play, most likely in an ISO format like this, as well as a PS2 BIOS, usually in a bin format inside a folder. And I'm going to keep these on the desktop for easier access. Keep in mind that downloading these is illegal, so I'll be linking the methods to extract these from your own physical console and PS2 discs in the required software section in the description. Once you have your PS2 BIOS and game files, the next step is to download the emulator from PCSX2.net. Go to the download section, click Windows, and choose Download for the standalone installer. Before moving on to these next steps, ensure you have your control controller plugged in. Click on the emulator's exe file after it downloads. For this guide, select Normal Installation. Click Next. Next again. Install. And Finish to open the first time configuration for PCSX2. Choose Next. Next again, and here's where you'll need your PS2 BIOS file. Uncheck Use Default Setting, click on Browse, and as I said earlier, I have my BIOS on the desktop, so I'm going to go to the desktop and select the folder that contains the PS2 BIOS file. Click Select Folder after doing so, and you should be able to highlight the BIOS from the upper menu. Click on Finish to start up PCSX2, and go to C DVD, ISO Selector, Browse. Select the game, again most likely in an ISO format, and click Open to select the game. To play the game, just go to System and click Boot ISO, Fast. If you want better graphics, need better performance, your game looks strange in some ways, or your controls don't work, then stick around for more configuration. Otherwise, have fun playing. Keeping in mind that you need a good enough GPU to improve the in-game graphics, increasing the resolution is probably the most noticeable and can be done by navigating to Config, Video, Plugin Settings, and increasing the internal resolution here. A 3 times native resolution bump is a good balance between performance and graphical fidelity. If you don't know much about your computer's hardware, however, I recommend testing each setting out first before going too high on the internal resolution, or combining multiple settings together, as going too high will cause lag. Anisotropic filtering can be increased to 16 times for when viewing textures at oblique angles. You can change the game's look a little more by going to Shader Configuration and selecting the FXAA option for smoothing edges while blurring the screen a little. I don't necessarily prefer the look using this option, but you might. You can also enable Shade Boost and adjust the sliders according to your preferences. A lot of people now have widescreen monitors, but only some PS2 games support it. For those games that do support it, you can more easily enable it by navigating to Config, Emulation Settings, and changing the Aspect Ratio to Widescreen 16x9. Click Apply, OK, and when you get back in-game, make sure to go into the menus and enable widescreen to ensure no stretching occurs. If the game doesn't natively support widescreen, you still may be able to utilize widescreen without stretching it, by looking up a widescreen patch and applying it. Keep in mind, this may cause issues, but I'll link it in the graphics configuration section of the description to a useful thread post for those interested. If you encounter slowdown, lag, or stutters even without modifying the graphics at all, here are some CPU, GPU, or stability-related solutions that may help, starting with CPU. Go to Config, Emulation Settings, navigate to the Speed Hacks tab, and select MTVU if you have three or more cores. If you're unsure of your core count, check the Find Core Count in the Performance and Compatibility Configuration section of the description. If enabling this doesn't help performance enough, go to the lower left of the emulation settings to where it says presets, and move the slider to the right one notch. The further right you go, the more performance you may gain, but it may also cause all kinds of other problems such as intense stuttering or other stability issues. If you go to Config, Audio, Plugin Settings, it may be helpful to lower the interpolation from 4 to a lower value, or disable effects processing. If none of these options help much, your GPU may be the problem and not your CPU. 
In this case, go to Config, Video, Plugin Settings, and in the renderer list, select a software-based renderer like so. You won't be able to benefit from very many graphical enhancements, but it'll put the rendering load on your CPU instead of your GPU, which may be helpful for some computers. Your game might stutter even if your frame rate is good and consistent. This can happen if you have inconsistent frame times, but there's a way to sometimes fix this as well by downloading a program called Riva Tuner. I've left a link in the consistent frame times section of the performance and compatibility configuration section of the description. After you download, install, and open the program, all you have to do is set the frame rate limit to 60. You may have to change it to 50, however, if you're playing the PAL version of a given game. Unfortunately, if none of these solutions appear to help, the problem could lie with your hardware or the game you're attempting to emulate. Not all games run equally. If you come across certain glitches like artifacting or ghosting, it may be tied to the specific game you're playing. There are a couple things you can do about this. Go to Config, Video, Plugin Settings, Enable Hardware Hacks, and click Advanced Settings and Hacks for options that are mostly fixes for specific games. As an example, I'm playing GTA San Andreas, so I'll be enabling the Auto Flush option to fix the radiosity. If your problem doesn't appear anywhere here, I recommend visiting the wiki.pcsx2.net website for possible solutions to any stability or performance related problems tied to a given game. If this doesn't work, googling the problem may help. Your controller may not work well with the default settings. If you have controller problems, go to the Windows Start menu, type in Controller, and click Set up USB Game Controllers, even if you're not using a USB controller. If it shows up like so, Windows has correctly detected your controller. To bind controls to a controller manually, navigate to Config, Controllers, and click Plugin Settings. Select the Pad 1 tab to configure the first player's controller, and now you can bind buttons to the controller by first clicking on a button key bind and pressing on the corresponding button on your controller afterwards. Do this for all the binds and click OK when finished. If you can't launch a game or PCSX2 due to an error, you may need to download drivers or software essential to Windows programs. I've left links for these near the bottom of the description in the Essential Links section. That's all I can offer for now, and hopefully this tutorial has helped you out. Thanks for watching.